What is up, boys? We are back with another Yu-Gi-Oh! opening. This time we actually did get some Legacy of Destruction boxes because I thought, why not? Let's get a case, pull some QCRs, and um, have a good time. Honestly, though, I feel like this set is about average. Phantom Nightmare. We were spoiled with Phantom Nightmare and definitely Age of Overlord, was it? But this set, I mean, right now, at least isn't doing too well because a lot of the higher rarity stuff is the little yugi stuff and the archetype isn't seeing that much play because it's not that competitive see the thing about when people people complain about prices and i understand and about the rarity spreads but high rarity good good cards that are high rarity are actually kind of healthy for a product unfortunately so anyways let's open these up and see what we can do all right we got with trust trusty blade so we don't uh you know take too long here because we don't want to struggle with packaging. All right, we are in, boys. Holy shit, these are chunky. I don't. I haven't opened up a box for a main set in a long ass time, and yeah, they're they're chunky, boys, for sure. The size sets because you only get like five cards per pack are not as chunky. So okay, so lights worn, ages. Let's see what uh, what's in here because uh, yeah, again, I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of this set. Um, and let me know what you guys think about it. I don't understand. I don't know why, to be honest. I mean, the little Yugi archetypes is pretty nice. Like the artwork is cool, and all, but I don't know. And then of course there's uh, freaking Ashend. I'm not into the Ashend. I know some people are not personally hyped. What else is there? Hmm. There's more Snake Eyes. I think I'm not into Snake Eyes. So the only the only archetype that I really like in here, honestly, is the Ancient gear golem and it's not as high rarity and it's also probably not as good so ancient gear tanker though look, look at that like how do you not like this archetype this boy is on a motorcycle and has a fucking gun in his right hand like that's that's chad chad ass all the way manly manly shit all right extinguishing the ascend cooling embers melodoyas or whatever gold wait there's gold private stuff in here as well First Ultra, uh, Eradicator. So, I'm, I'm not, uh, that's another thing. Like, I'm, I'm not... I don't even know what's in here because I'm not really excited for it. But why is Gold Pride stuff in here? Because um, it was a TCG exclusive, wasn't it? Unless the OCG uh, added more support for it. I'm really out of the loop, man. But uh, look, look at that, dude. That's a really nice callback to the uh, to Crowler. Like, yeah, there's, there's a lot... The Ancient Gear stuff is really nice. For sure. I mean, Gandora, the cover card is also pretty cool looking, but it's it's not the ancient gear cards for sure. Oh, okay, yes, yeah, forgot the ten pie dragons are also in here. That's that's actually pretty decent because uh, every every main set I do firmly believe that uh, yeah every main set should have an expensive or chase super rare at least one because it will keep the set a little bit more healthy. But in that case, also the, a lot of the ten pie dragons are just like common so get gandora g the dragon of destruction the uh the fabled cover card i think um and i think this card was going up in value but i i don't think it went up that high uh also actually um now that i think about it the secret rare, the most expensive secret is like a 30 dollar card so yeah the set isn't is uh not that healthy to be honest i really hope the next main set is a, a little bit better but i kind of feel like it's gonna not be that good because it's gonna be it's gonna be oh dandy white lion that's awesome it's gonna be a uh oh that that looks this should have been a high rarity card like at least a super rare because that artwork is it just goes hard man the the color yeah like the, the contrast with all the colors on the uh from the background to the claws and whatnot that, that looks nice but yeah i don't think the, the next main set is also gonna you know it's gonna flop because it's, it's Exodia, and there's... I don't think people are going to be playing Exodia, to be honest. Uh, see, the thing about Phantom Nightmare was... A lot of people were actually hyped for Ubel. But as soon as people knew that the next main set was going to be focusing on Exodia... A lot of people were just like, oh, wow, another DM uh, or, uh, box, you know. It is what it is. Oh, yeah, alright. So, second Ultra, uh, Safria, Divine Dragon of the Voiceless Voice... Voiceless voice is another, you know, it's kind of disappointing, and I don't, I don't know why it's, it's not that bad, and it was topping in the OCG, 
Hasn't really been br breaking ground in the TCG though. Really, I, I haven't really been following the meta recently, but haven't seen a lot of hype for it. Oh, that's cool. I, I like these illusion cards because you always gotta look out for the uh, the eye there. All right, Embers of the Ascend. Nice. The artwork is nice. It's just, uh, oh, although it is a generic pyro fusion, so you know this might do do work in certain uh, certain. If this card is fusion summon, you can target one fuel spell. In your graveyard, add it to your hand. At the start of the damage of this card battles an opponent's pyro monster. You can destroy that opponent's monster. And it and if it is if it is your turn, this card can make a second attack in a row. You can only use Okay, so it's not that good, but I, I just wanted to read the effects. I was like, hey, that's a good super poly target against pyro decks. But is the effect worth it? And uh it's, it's not that good because what are what are the chances you're gonna be running a, a field spell in a competitive deck and hell yeah there we go that's a 18 dollar card right there 10 pie dragon hydra a lot more of the 10 pie dragon should have been at least one more super rare uh 10 pie dragon that isn't an extra deck monster i feel would have been uh pretty nice because usually the extra deck monsters are typically a one of so you don't need that many right code of the soul the soul man he's a soul man all right come on qcr haven't pulled a qcr from any legacy of destruction blisters or um that special edition box although to be honest i haven't opened up that many i did open up more product more loose product from phantom nightmare than legacy of destruction but that's not really my fault either because i did try to buy some uh, it's just that there was nothing in the store. So, uh, third ultra here ties that bind. is a very, very cheap ultra. Not exactly sure on the price, for, uh, like a hundred percent at least. But I think I'm pretty sure it's like five, less than five bucks. You know, so it's definitely not that expensive. All right. Although it's a quarter century rare, I think it was seeing some buyouts. A lot of the little Yugi quarter century rares were seeing buyouts. So definitely go after those. Uh, Sangin Pie Transcended Dragon. I wonder if you can get two um, two Ten Pies in a box. So, so we did just pull two of the Synchros, but I was watching a, a case opening. So I was really curious about the pull rates for the uh, the Effect Ten Pie Super, and they seemed pretty low. Like it was less than ten, and actually I think it was like around seven. If I'm going to be completely honest, and that just seems really low for a case. Like can not a Super Rare? I said it before, but Konami found a way to to short in, in a main set. But hell yeah, there we go. That's a pretty decent uh, secret rare. This is about 15 bucks and climbing because it's like a newer kind of generic archetype. Yeah, I think it supports plants. Uh, well, I guess we can read it, right? Plants, reptile, or insect. So it that's a wide-ass range, to be honest. I don't know if people are playing this in Trap Tricks. Um, but, I don't. you know, to be honest, probably not good in Trap Tricks because uh the whole shtick is traps right like wow shocking that an archetype called trap tricks focuses on traps but yeah you heard it here first guys trap tricks focuses on traps a uh, more mar more marshmallow that's an awesome looking card i hope that the little yugi archetype also gets more more love because i'm really digging this branch of new support for the the uh the what's it called um the pro tags like the the ubel stuff instead of mashing it in with heroes it's its own archetype i mean it does work well with heroes but you don't have to and same thing with little yugi right you don't have to play dark magician you could play dark magician and i really do like that all right so i think that's the last ultra vetoes the dragon of endless dragon if people were hyping this up and it turned out to be a one dollar card after the dust settles and that's why i say guys and say it with me do not buy the singles on pre-sales that uh you you might find you know there's exceptions to the rules of course but the reason there are rules or i guess why things break exceptions or there are exceptions i i should say is because there's a pattern and the pattern is well established you usually do not want to to purchase pre-sales because the uh, the prices drop shockingly. I know. Uh, all right, twin headed dragon and no QCR in that box. Let's see 
if the second box treats us a little bit better. Although I will say uh, I'll take that box any day because we got a 10 pie, which is about 18 bucks. We got one of the more expensive uh, supers as well. And uh, what else did we get? Gandora X. Uh, it was a pretty decent box, I'd say. They should throw tokens in these in these boxes as well, though. I will say that. Why not, right? Just throw us a, throw us a bone, Konami. All right, so gold. So there's more than one gold pride. I guess the the gold pride players are are eating healthy. <laughs> Although, is that enough to to make the archetype good? Uh, I'll, I'll let you guys decide on that one because I'm definitely not playing gold pride. In Papa's footsteps. All right, code of soul. Let's see if this box also gives us another ten pie dragon uh, pydra. I think the ten pies also all have different. Um, attribute so that's kind of cool i always like our ar ar archetypes that don't have a very strict uh attribute you know so because we i'm tired of dark and light man like we get it that's that's uh what konami's default is but let's let's do something let's do better konami let's do better wake up center ion i think this is a new oh wait wait it's a waifu archetype wait is it like sky strikers where they're like mech Mech, mech, uh, mech waifus. That's weird, man. Konami and their waifus. I swear. Anyways, I guess it is because people keep buying them, but stop buying them, guys. What are you doing? Support the Chad archetype. It's like, I mean, that's a Chad uh, card. It's a retrain too from one of the, from the one of the old uh, vanillas. I think. I think it was a vanilla. But yeah, I also love that retrain re uh, train we got we got going. Let's keep it going. Turn silence. Wait, is that that's little Yugi's archetype, right? Target one of these up monster you control. Increase its level by three. Also, if you activate this card in response to your opponent's monster. But that is silent swordsman, isn't it? Yeah, that is silent swordsman. Okay. Well, you control shining sarcophagus and a monster that matches it. Negate the that opponent's monster effect. Oh. Also, if you end with this card in response to your opponents, that is pretty cool. Okay, so that that harkens back to the uh, silent swordsman effect, I think. So there's there's a silent swordsman and a uh, silent magician. I really don't know the 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 effects of of the two. I think silent magician actually just increases his uh, his attack, doesn't it? Or at least the mini one. Hey, there we. I mean, speaking of silent magician zero. Pretty nice. Oh, I heard this is supposed to be a chick, though, and I, I, I don't see it. But I, I gotta read the effect. I'm sorry. If your opponent draws a card, increase this card's level by the number drawn. While well, this card's level is higher than its original level, it gains attack equal to the difference times 500. Wait, there's no level cap, though. Wait, there's no level cap. What the hell? When your opponent activates a spell card or effect, you can and you control a little shiny sarcophagus. Quick effect, you can negate the activation. And if you do increase this card's level by one wait there is no limit is there an inherent limit on the level because i don't think there is right like this card can technically be level like 20 or some shit okay you guys gotta let me know is there an, an inherent level cap on monsters because i don't see a restriction on the card itself anyway so uh you can only use this effect once per turn yeah i probably could shouldn't have even read that to be honest but hell yeah that's actually a pretty decent effect um yeah, it's pretty decent because it, it just keeps increasing its level and therefore its attack, right? Although a lot of the... It would be a better card back in the day because, uh, I mean, <laughs> a lot of cards nowadays, like, you can get a, a, a 10,000 attack beater, you know, pretty easily. It's just... it's You're not going to win the game just with a, a, a big dick monster, a big dick menace. you got to really... You got you got to play around your opponent's board, you know. <laughs> All right, so what we got here? Minerva, the Athenian Lightsworn. Okay, some people were hyped for the Lightsworn. I still think that should have been a super rare, but it hurts me to see that in Cross Keeper or Cross Porter, the new Cross, the new Neo supports um, should have been a higher rarity card, and in both of its printings, it was a it was a common like at least give, at least give it a super rare. What are you doing? Why does Konami hate GX so much? Like, they do give it some love, 
and then the they picked the weirdest rarities for and the the sets for the gx um uh anime pyrite knight all right all right yeah because like not none of the uh crowlers cards seem to be high rarity could be wrong but i've only seen comments so far i think i think could be wrong uh, all right, Aegis, Jungle Dweller, Blessing of the Voiceless Voice. And I got to caveat that, too. Like, hey, man, I could be wrong because I know someone's going to come and be like, actually, you pulled one at 226. Like, dude, that was like literally five minutes ago, man. Like, come on. Do you think I'm going to remember five minutes ago? Think, man. Think. Jeez. All right. So I think we need one more secret and one more or two more ultras. So. Let's see. The Ultras, are there any high-value Ultras? Yes, actually, the, the Mini Lightsworn Dragon is pretty expensive. 17 bucks, I think, so it's actually doing better than most of the Seeker Bears in this set, so let's do that. Uh, Goblin Biker, Trika, Grayer, and actually, it's one of the more expensive QCRs as well. The most expensive QCR was, for uh, a while, uh, Nightmare Throne, which I actually kind of forgot. That's also an ultra rare and pretty expensive. So that that's the most expensive ultra. Actually, it might be the most expensive card now that I think of it from this set. That's insane. Anyway, so the Dragon Undertaker. Nice. It's an illusion card. So there are definitely more illusion cards being uh, minted for sure. And uh, I'm here for it because we, uh, yeah, we need it. We need it, Konami. Tenpai! Let's go, 10, uh, 18 bucks. Let's go. See that, and that's why we need really good super rares because uh, a box opening is just more hype that way. Like you're not gonna be disappointed when you pull a an expensive super rare, right? So, okay, I'll put it this way, right? Once once you pull the, the two secret rares and the, the four ultras from a box, if there is no good chase super rare, what are you like? Why open up the remainder, right? Shining sarcophagus is, is the last secret rare. Noise, noise. So we can definitely start building a little Yugi deck. Although, yeah, I, I've given up all hope of actually playing uh, <laughs> Paper Yu Gi Oh! because uh, yeah, it just takes too much time, man. I, I I don't got time to go to a a store that's like thirty minutes away to sit around in a room that's hot and yeah it just doesn't seem uh, not appealing to me uh, personally i'll stick to master duel all right fishborg harpooner hell yeah and another gr uh, grave squirmer every time i see it man every time i see your face i am disappointed grave squirmer squirmer sure also, this could have been, this could be a pretty nice uh, high rarity. I don't think it's good. I haven't read it. I, I, it's probably not good, but just for the nostalgia. Silent Swordsman Zero. So we got both, actually. Silent Magician Zero and then Silent Swordsman Zero. What does this guy do? All right, so once per turn during the standby phase increase, this card's level by one. While this card is level is higher than its original, it gains a tag equal to the difference. When your opponent activates a card or effect that targets Shining Sarcophagus or a monster that matches it, you, uh, the, that matches it that you control, quick effect. Well, yeah, of course. Why? I guess. But why would you help your opponent out? Why? Why that clause? Actually, yeah, that's kind of weird. Anyway, so you're gonna gain the activation if you do increase this card's level by one. Should have destroyed. Should be negate the activation and destroy the card and then increase this level by one. But yeah. Eh, okay. We are actually getting the uh, Dark Magician in Archetype for, for that, uh, for little Yugi's Archetype. So, yeah, next next set. We'll see if it does anything, though. All right, so last card here, Multi-Universe. Interesting, kind of looks like a generic card. I, I kind of thought it was, uh, okay, I, I don't know why, but I, I was thinking about, like, a Supreme King Archetype. Anyway, so that is the video guys let's see i mean i don't think we did too terrible we got two tenpai dragons and i will take that any day um but i don't think uh, like i said this set doesn't have that many good high rarity cards if i'm going to be completely honest but we did get a ragnarika and two little yugi cards so if the little yugi archetype ever does anything you know your boy got some cards so that's awesome and nothing too crazy on the ultras actually so that is the video, guys. Catch you guys in the next one.